Hi folks, we've got a part that has a half inch radius fillet around it. We should be able to use a one inch ball end mill to machine this and have it look really nice uh, with a five axis toolpath using flow. The key to this, the cam is actually super simple. The tricky part is getting the CAD side corrected to create a surface. Let's show how we did that. If we just try to use flow based on the CAD solid model, as a layman, I, I would think this would work and it doesn't. You'll see we pick our four pieces of geometry, click OK, and we get disjointed toolpaths that are going to have retracts. It's not a single smooth toolpath around it like we would want. So we've got to create a surface, and that's because flow is driven off that surface geometry. So we hop back into design, create, sketch. We'll pick this top plane. We wanted to create a projection, but don't hit the keyboard shortcut P uh, which is what we often say we can do. Rather, go to create, project, and this time we wanna say include 3D geometry. And we're gonna project four faces. One, two, three, four. Finish our sketch, and I'll turn off our vise and even our solid body right now just to show the sketch that we created, which is a three-dimensional sketch. Now we'll go to create form. This is, we're gonna, we're gonna create the quote unquote surface geometry. And we're gonna do a sweep. And what I think about is cool about this is that a sweep takes a piece of geometry and it sweeps it around a profile or path. And that's kind of exactly what we want the tool to do as well here. So the profile, I wanna pick this curve, but I can't pick it um, without it auto selecting more. So I'll turn off chain selection. Now I can pick that single curve and I wanna take that curve and I wanna sweep it around either the top or the bottom path. Uh, and here I actually will want chain selection back on. Um, let's see here if I pick, move, move your mouse around, you'll see, there we go. That's exactly the path I want. And you click okay and sure enough, we get that. And what's kind of cool is again, the CAD intent sweeping that around is exactly what we want our tool to do. Only problem is you'll see that the surface doesn't really reflect uh, the shape and the profile. We just need to add some more faces Adding more faces gives it more chance to better conform. Going from eight to 15 looks good. Click OK, finish form. And now you'll see we have a single piece of geometry to, to work with. Hop back into the manufacturer workspace. 3D flow. We'll pick our one inch ball end mill, half inch radius. And under the geometry tab, I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the solid model that way I'm only seeing our surface. I'll click it and you'll see the arrows, the red arrows are pointed kind of up and down, if you will. We want them to go left and right. So if we click them once, they'll flip and they'll flip back and forth as you click them. And click OK. Let's just check. This won't be a uh, five axis toolpath, but it should um, show us both that the flow toolpath is working and it'll show us why we don't want to leave this as a three axis toolpath because in this case, the shank of our tool is going to be rubbing up against the top of the part, but we want the part to tip over so we could have a shorter uh, tool stick out or if you've got features up top of the part and so forth. So that's what's awesome about flow is under multi-axis tab, use multi-axis, and we can put in a 15 degree sideways tilt and knock on wood, we should be good. Simulate, click OK. Perfect, even better now with Fusion, we've got our UMC 500 selected under the machine setup. I'll show you that right here. Go to edit the setup, machine, UMC 500. So what we can now do, we've got our vices as well in here and go to simulate with machine, click play. There we go. As always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.